Yeah, it'll it'll pick up. Yeah, it'll definitely pick up. All right, everyone, we are back for our heads up match here at the WPT Lucky Hearts Open. We have lost Muckle Pahuja, but I'm still here with Jason Kuhn. He's going to ride it out with me for the duration of this match. So, Jason, it's essentially the heads up match we anticipated at the start of the final table, our two chip leaders coming in. Yeah, yeah, I think uh, everything's kind of, for the most part, played out the way that we expected it to. Yeah. Uh, 30,000, 60,000? Yeah, one more. Or Kelly got really unlucky to bust. She would have she been did. in a position to come back and get second place there. It was a pretty, pretty brutal beat. Yeah, she would have had nearly 5 million, yeah, right? Yeah, well, nearly 4 million. I think it was 3.9 okay. million, but that's still plenty of chips. Well, these two have definitely been the most aggressive at this final table. And both of them have done a nice job of leveraging their stacks and the situations they've encountered to go after the shorter stacks and get themselves into this heads-up match. Yeah, I, I think that Mark's a bit more aggressive pre-flop than Brian. Brian's uh, a little bit more collie. Um, so I'm not sure what kind of uh, heads-up match we're going to see, if it's going to be a really high variance, 3 betty 4 betty 5 betty kind of thing, or if it's just going to be a lot of min-raising and calling. You've got to think that Brian would prefer a post-flop match. He seems yeah. like Mark the one who's a little more comfortable there. Yeah, he seems very comfortable. Check. Well, Mark flops open-ended here out of the big blind. Both yeah, players showing this double flush draw board after Brian has kind of capped his range and you have mm -hmm. an open ender. Uh, you want to put a lot of pressure on his weak kind of 9x, 7x X checkbacks. This is a great candidate to do that since you have 8 outs against those hands. Yeah. I think that uh, the only bet size that makes sense here is very big uh, between pot and 3 times spot, whatever you want to do. I think um, a smaller bet. 300,000. Yeah, so see, he's half potting here, which mm -hmm. is kind of, I think, him saying, I want to be able to value bet a good seven or any nine in my range. Wait, he's not half potting. Didn't, didn't he full pot it? I think he bet 300 into it's 600. Into six. Oh, excuse me. I'm uh, All right, my mistake. Yeah, I don't know what Brian <coughs> had, but yeah. I don't think that that's a pro for that hand, I don't think that that's a proper bet size. Although, it's it's these things are very marginal, what I'm talking about, one way or the other. It's not... But as poker players, we strive for the optimal play. So yeah, I think yeah. it's always think worth people discussing. People are curious to kind of know what you know what what uh, say you know if you watch like Tom Marchese or mm -hmm. one of these guys, Final Table or Doc Sands or any of those guys that are betting a specific way, and you're curious why. I'm just trying to kind of paint the picture yeah. why someone would be betting this specific size relative to uh, another one. Mm -hmm. And bet sizing is definitely the most okay. difficult part of poker. And there's a lot of bets that make sense, but <laughs> Usually only one or two optimal bet sizes. It's also a subject that we don't touch on until you get fairly advanced in poker. Like, you, you learn basic bet, si bet sizing early in your poker education, but once you've got all the fundamentals down, like most people, you're just trying to teach them when they should bet, when they should check, when they should fold. Yeah. And that, uh, of itself, is Very really hard. hard to get a Very grasp hard, on. Yeah. And then bet sizing becomes this next layer of the game where you're like, all right, well, you know that you're going to bet, but how do you maximize the value in this situation by tweaking your bet sizing just right? Yeah, so basically, if, uh, you know, a, a beginner's way to kind of learn how to size your bets, uh, you can ask yourself multiple questions, <coughs> and I think a good starting point would be, okay, can my opponent have a very strong hand here? If they can't, you usually want to apply pressure to them with bigger bets, and also, do I have a lot of bluffs here? And if you're bluffing a lot, you want to bet bigger with your bluffs and bigger with your really made, mm -hmm. your strong made hands. So that was kind of the logic behind the, the last game. He has a lot of has a lot of uh, draws on that board, yep. and our opponent has checked back, which makes it very unlikely that he has a super nutted hand. Mark is going to raise 350,000 total. A pair of sevens here for Mark to open the action. Brian with king three in the big blind. Very standard defense. Brian calls. Flops bottom pair on ace 4 3, so the seven's still ahead. Yes, yeah, it's going to go, I believe, check bet call. Mm hmm. I agree. And after that, it would be unlikely that you'd see too much more betting on this texture. Yeah. So this is a fine bet size for this for this board texture. It's great. It's kind of uh, way ahead, way behind a lot of the time. There's not a ton of draws that you need to protect from, so a small bet makes sense. Six on the turn. 
Yeah, I think this is a, a pretty good spot for Mark to go for a second street of value. I agree. He, yeah, the he five has, or a six especially are you know, good yeah, cards for Yeah, those are great it. cards. He has a gutter if he is behind, and he can continue to extract value from, say, a hand like mm. six five, which is pretty good to protect your uh, equity against that hand, and uh, a hand like king four, king three that might yep. get sticky and call again. It's just a pretty cool spot to bet twice and check the river. Opponent can also have backdoor hearts that are going to call Absolutely, again. Absolutely, yeah. And it's a board you don't get raised on very often. And he will let that go. Uh, Zach Gilbert on Twitter asks, will this stream be archived anywhere? The answer is yes, they are archived. I believe they are definitely archived and available to members on Club WPT. And I want to say that we also archive them on the WPT main site. However, my understanding is that they are not available until after the televised version of the episode is aired. Now, this, of course, is not a televised event, so I'm not sure how long the turnaround is before we would upload such a thing, but at some point it will be available. So I know that's not the most concise answer, but at some stage you'll be able to watch this. Brian here on the button. Seven, going to raise up 7-4. So we were wondering, seven, is this going to be a limping match or raising match? Seeing uh, Brian raise up hands like 7-4 makes me think we're going to see a lot more raises than limps. Yeah, I think yeah. Uh, just from the outside looking in, I believe uh, Brian should have a uh, non-stop raising strategy Call. since Mark hasn't been as sticky in the blinds, Call. at least up until this point. Maybe he, gets, yeah. he defends uh, more now that they're heads up, whereas um, Brian just hasn't folded a big blind. So... Uh, since steel success is lower, um, a limping strategy would make check. a little more sense mm -hmm. against someone like that. Check. Both players yeah. flop a pair and check on the queen 6-4 board. Ten of hearts on the turn adds a second flush draw. Wouldn't shock me to see another check check on this street. Yeah, I think uh, Brian's hand's fine as a check, but... I Mark's thinking about betting? Mark. you thinking about oh, betting in a Mark's Yeah, I, I definitely think Mark should bet the Mark. turn. Okay. Um, but I, I think Brian um, has a close spot between a flop C-bet just to protect against sure. all the over cards, and he's got plenty of He also has two backdoor draws as well. Yeah, exactly. So, and it's the hand has pretty Check poor, uh, the term would be visibility, on yeah. turns and rivers, which just means you're a little uncertain if you have the best hand or not. In those spots, that's a spot where you generally want to bet. I don't think I've ever heard that term used towards poker before. Can you expound on that a little bit when you say visibility? Yeah, so visibility is just um, basically a lot of the times in poker you want to make things easy on yourself. And... If you uh, say you ready, you can go check check on the flop, and there's no turn card that is going to change basically in your mind if you had the best hand on the flop or yeah. not. Whereas if you don't see bet 7 4 suited on queen 4 6 flush draw, basically any card other than a 7 or a 4, when opponent bets, you are very unclear if they've improved, if they have the best hand, uh, are you going to be able to call rivers? Mm -hmm. uh, basically, the game gets very difficult for you because you have poor visibility. You don't. Uh, the turns that don't improve your hand don't give you any knowledge of if if you can call down. It just gets tricky and tough. Gotcha. I like that. That's, a, that's a good term to add to the vocabulary. Uh, Mark here with a king ten of clubs is going to raise it up. Brian will make the call. Uh, calling or three betting this hand is fine, I think. Yeah. These are the type of hands I often like to put into my three bet range because it's so hard to make pairs that are going to get to showdown value. Uh, whereas when you three bet, if your opponent calls, you know on the low boards you're actually going to connect, and then on the high boards you're bluffing anyway, and are you know pretty good for you to be bluffing in terms of what you're representing. So absolutely, yep. This is a spot where Brian should bluff twice for sure. I mean, he gets on some rivers. Check a five or deuce on the river. Um, bet basically everything else excluding um, an eight or an ace king maybe Call. I wouldn't wouldn't bet any of those cards Mark Call. you could bet an eight but definitely not an ace or a king I would just give so card is a deuce of so this is just going to go check check and Brian's yeah. going to win the hand it's uh, too thin of a value bet to make yeah check check check, check, check. check. Brian shows compare Five of spades, deuce of spades. <laughs> uh -huh. Six of deuces. Oh, 
And there, as we see, and he nearly three hundred thousand dollar difference between first and second. So a, a pretty pricey heads up match. And we, you know, we never really know whether players are making deals or not. Um, yeah. I will say that deal making has something is something that's lost a lot of the stigma that used to surround it in this industry. It used to be very hush hush. The casinos didn't want to facilitate the deals. The poker tours didn't want to talk about the existence of deals. You know, players were kind of implied that they should keep it on the DL. Uh, whereas now, I think Poker Stars just shows the deal making process on their streams. Yeah, yeah. I mean, um, deal making should uh, it, sh it should just happen. I mean, yes. these, the stakes that these guys are playing now are just absolutely insane. Even if you have an edge, it's going to be somewhere between two and five or six percent, and you're playing a three hundred thousand dollar heads up sit and go. I mean, you didn't come play a thirty five hundred dollar tournament to play a three hundred thousand dollar heads up. That's right. So interesting board here, Jason Marcus flop top pair. Yeah, as Brian with a flush draw and a backdoor screen draw. Check. Um, since Mark has kind of been the unconventional kind of value raiser with top pair, I. I assume that this hand's going to fall into that r that range, so I think it's going to go bet raise. Yeah. Whereas most players, I think, would just check call queen jack. It's kind of a good way to protect your weaker hands, like your ace four, highs, your fours, your fives, your pocket I sixes. I will say he has been more comfortable raising these type of hands in position, and yeah. I wonder whether he'll do it out of position. Yeah, I, I just historically he's always raised. It looks like he has called yep. here, which is I think a much better way to play the hand. And I it's agree. also um, Brian is going to get in this spot. Brian is going to get to realize his equity. Um, that's a pretty uh, interesting card. I think this is a spot where the optimal play for Mark would be to lead uh, a small sizing on mm -hmm. this turn. Basically a good way to um, deny equity to some of the hands that have equity. And you're also, your opponent can't really raise you because the five is a good card for your range. Correct. Um, Seven on the river brings Brian a pair. Uh, yeah, this is going to go bet and a call. Basically. Yeah, I think bet call, right? Yeah. I don't think Brian will snap call, but he will call. Yeah, yeah. This is, he hardly has any better hands that play this way. It's just one of those weird spots where, by the river, much of uh, Brian's, excuse me, Mark's range has got some degree of showdown value. Like, you know, if he has 7-6, he's going to okay, check this river. Uh, if he has, like, ace-3 or ace-deuce, he'll probably check this mm -hmm. river. Yeah. So he's yeah. betting a little more polarized. Yeah. If he has 8-6, he got there. Like, yeah. you've got your 7, and you're definitely not excited about the call, but I guess you kind of have to, but... Uh, yeah, yeah, that's yeah, a call for sure. Oh. You're um, just too high up in your range, but it's still kind of gross because your opponent shouldn't show up with many worse hands. Yeah, I think Mark, yeah. though, I mean, he's uh, he's going to check call some hands. Let's say he has, like, 9-8 of clubs. Mm -hmm. He might just... Or, or I'm sorry, 9-8 with a backdoor flush draw yeah. or something like that. Hands that just have a lot of backdoor equity that he doesn't want to check raise the flop with, I think there's a reasonable chance that he just has some floats in there. He might even check call king high and then turn it into a bluff on the river, just sure. thinking that there's a chance that uh, Altman has ace high or something and try to get him to fold. And especially with that sizing, Brian was getting 4-1. to one. Yeah. Uh, it's possible that his opponent just wasn't sure what to do with the 7 in value bet, you know, like mm -hmm. one-third pot or something, yeah. and uh, you got to make that call, but it's one of those dirty-feeling calls. Yeah. Yeah, if Mark bet like a pot size bet there, you'd be in an awful spot with a mm -hmm. 7. Once he bet... That small, it's a very easy call. Mark here with the king queen. 375. Mark is going to raise 375,000. Call. Brian Collin. Two very nice hands. Mm hmm. Ooh, wow. Deuce, deuce of spades draws the flop. On 8 4, deuce, two spades. And it is 4 from Mark. Yeah, this would be a check call, I assume. Uh, raising certainly would be fine too. I, I think check calling is the play that he'll choose, and I think it's the, uh, a better play than raising. You have showdown value. Your opponent's going to continue to bluff on a lot of the cards that yep. give you the nuts. And if you're really lucky, you'll hit a deuce, and <laughs> your opponent will keep bluffing. Yeah, well, and yeah. the cool thing is, I mean, there's no turn card that you don't get to check call, yeah. which is which is pretty nice for your hand. Check. Whereas if you have, let's say you have like, uh, you know, five high spades here or something, right. it, it might play better as a check raise Agreed. at some point. 
Because you just can't check call a turn with five high. Of cards. Ten of hearts. Well, Jack, ten, neither a spade on the turn in river. Yeah, I think this is a great card for Mark to bluff if it does go check. I can't mm -hmm. imagine uh, Brian betting the river, and I think the 10 is just a fantastic card for him to bluff. Yeah, there and are I just so many smaller pairs in Brian's range, and it is very conceivable that uh, uh, Mark would take a line that goes bet, check, bet for value with yeah. the 10 on the river. Yeah, or, yeah, he was just decided to give up with, say, he see mm -hmm. that, you know, 10-5 of hearts or something. Or, well, can't have that one, yep. but 10-5 suited and river to 10. It's just a very easy value bet. Mark agrees with us. Seven fifty. And it's seven fifty. And also Mark sizing it small makes it look like a value bet. I, I like his sizing. sizing there, yeah. I think you want to keep Brian indifferent with a four ace high, something like that. And you want to be able to value bet ten. I also think if you have ace four in the spot, it would be a very easy value bet. Like like King Four plus is a very, very easy value bet here. Mm. Brian does fold, so a well-played hand by Mark there. Yeah, I think it was great. I think even though his king high is showdown, uh, you have an immediately profitable c-bet. Um, any spade, you just have to fold, so I think betting that hand's fine. I think if you had king-queen with the queen of spades, uh, checking or betting would be close to equal On value. the flop? Yeah. Yeah, I yeah. was thinking that about how do I differ my flop play if I've got a spade in my hand. Yeah, it's almost better in some circumstances because you get to continue semi-bluffing, but the problem is is once you start um, bluffing with these hands that have a ton of showdown value, you're just bluffing way too much and you're bluffing inefficiently. So um, you want to check a with a lot of your showdown value hands. Um, Makes you wonder if you should just alternate, like, you know, check the, s the king, bet the queen or something, like whether that's I, I how think, you achieve balance. I think he should just check the spades and bet okay. the nine spades is what I think he should do. A quick one there. Brian raises. Mark folds. It's a well-paced heads-up match, though. I like guys who don't posture, just yeah. make their decisions, and both these guys are playing well. Guys, we'll give you one last reminder. There's some great action on DraftKings tonight, especially the NBA slate is a big one tonight. you still got about an hour and 45 minutes to get your lineup set. Some pretty big guarantees tonight, including a $333 buy-in that's got a 200K guaranteed prize pool. Uh, but there's also a 33 buy-in that's got 150K and a $3 buy-in that's got 100K guarantee. So some really big tournaments on DraftKings tonight for the NBA, but there's also a ton of other sports. You know, right now they're offering NBA, NHL, PGA, big tournament on this weekend, college basketball. They'll be doing a uh, March Madness promotion and, of course, the MMA. Plus, you can win your way into live WPT events on DraftKings. And you'll have an opportunity to win your way into the LAPC later this week, much as I did earlier this week. So in the event that you win that package, we'll uh, hang out in L.A., go to a Clippers game. Jason Kuhn's going to come along with us. We'll all have some beers and, uh, and watch Chris Paul throw up an assist to DeAndre Jordan now that Blake Griffin is out. So. Mark bets 400000 there with his King Ten of Clubs. Takes it down. Brian did not connect with King Four offsuit. Shot of the trophy for the winner. Gets a guitar shaped trophy. Essentially, really just a guitar. Yeah. That is also a trophy. It's pretty cool. It's not bad. Yeah. I remember they used to do the promotion, I want to say it was here, or maybe it was Jacksonville, where, maybe it was Jacksonville, where the uh, the last remaining player under 21 got like a surfboard. Mm. Um, but down here in Florida, I believe it's 18 plus to play right. in poker tournaments. It's going to be a call. Mm -hmm. Call. So it looks like, at least to this point, they've had calling hands. They haven't really had yeah. three betting hands other than the five deuce of spades. Um, 
It's like, this is going to be very <laughs> We're like, yeah, he didn't really have anything to three-bet except five uses of spades. Yeah, but, yeah, that's a pretty you know, yeah. Either way. You understand wh why people don't three-bet those hands when you mm -hmm. see it that way. Well, Mark flops open-ended here. Yeah, it looks like he's going to lead. Brian here with a gut shot and a backdoor flush draw. Mark bets 425K. It's going to be a call. Brian will make the call. Brian the turn's always getting bet again by Mark after he's led this hand. Eight of clubs on the turn. I was going to ask, are there any turns you don't bet? Yeah, and this that, is an interesting one. one to discuss. Yeah, this one um, is pretty tricky. It just depends on what your leading range is made Mark up checks. with. If you're leading, like, all your two pairs, I mean, he obviously has no sets. I mean, he could have quads, I guess, but it's, that's not reality. Yeah. Um, yeah, if you're leading just like all your one pair hands, like your, your all your top pairs, let's say, and some bluffs, you probably just want to check this turn. Brian, Brian will check back. River is the third eight. Yeah, on the board. this is an obligatory bluff, in my opinion, on the 9-7. Um, even though he's going to get I think he should bluff. I think he should bluff. I mean, he basically has the bottom of his range. Yeah, yeah. What else does and, he get there with? And I think he checks, like, uh, he just checks a, a queen on the turn a lot. Yep. And, yeah, you're going to get called sometimes by ace high, and you're going to get called by a boat or whatever. But um, I just think you got to go for it. you got nine high. You've got plenty of boats. And your opponent clearly doesn't have a queen. I think he could. He could, but it's infrequent. Yeah, it's infrequent for sure. Guess sometimes you gotta wave the white flag though. Yeah. From what we've seen so far, uh, Mark isn't as aggressive on the river as he is like pre flop and on the flop. Which I think is generally a decent strategy to have in tournament poker because mm -hmm. river bets are the most consequential. Yeah. So people tend to not go for it as much, which I think without that's pretty good, you know? Yeah. Yeah, you don't want to lose a massive chunk of your stack in a poker tournament. Particularly if you're not a cash player who's used to finding themselves in these complicated river scenarios, it, it makes sense that you just kind of shy away from sophisticated play on that stream. I'm not saying that Mark's not, not capable of making some really interesting river plays, but typically we see tournament players more aggressive pre-flop on the flop, less so on the river, and also with stack sizes the way they are, they get to those rivers with decisions to make less frequently. Yeah. So raising a call by a pair right, of This is actually a button here. limp, I believe. Oh, I'm sorry. You're right. Yeah. Um, You're in the zone today. Yeah. Uh, there's so much confusion happening here. He leads the deuces. Brian bets 150K. Hmm. Oh, Mark is going to fold. Brian will win the pot. Thoughts on that lead, Jason? Um, I guess he's just betting for protection. Uh, he's just going to stab once and see if it worked and then give up because he doesn't really get to uh, check call the flop. Mm. So, um, yeah, I mean, I, I guess that makes fine sense. It's it, Even though it's only a two-out bluff when called or whatever, uh, it really is a difficult hand to check call the flop with. So yeah. I don't hate it. I just think, you know, it's kind of like a protection bluff kind of thing to make, which I, which I get. I do understand. At first, it, it kind of confused me, but I think he just said, okay, I'll see if I have the best hand here, and if I get called, I'm just going to one of those things where it feels too weak to check fold, exactly. and even though you know you're not getting called by many worse, you're like, well, I guess this is the lesser of both evils. Yeah, and I mean, hey, yeah. what, do you, what do you flop a pair with two cards in your hand? Th a third of the time or something, I yeah. think you make a pair, so I guess he just figures to be good there two-thirds mm -hmm. of the time. And Every now and then his opponent somehow shows up with an ace or king high that lets exactly. him get the river. Yep. It's not too frequent in a limp pot, but Strange things have happened. Mark calls a raise here with king four in the big. Check. And flops a king on king seven three. Nice check there by Brian with his ace high. Yep, and I think that this will go bet fold. Mm -hmm. um, having an eight in your hand here is, is a makes your hand a really bad bluff catcher. I, I'm I surprised by that super check. Super confused by yeah, that. Yeah, I don't uh, get with that one. Yeah, especially with the ten of hearts, you just have so many draws in your range at this yeah. point. You want to be betting all your kings. I mean, I don't. I don't think Brian will ever fold a seven to you for two bets. And um, it doesn't look. You don't have any reason to believe that Brian is going to bet either. Yeah, now yeah. this is going to go back call. I don't imagine Brian folding the ace eight. 
from the river. What's your sizing? Half a million? Uh, well, if my range is uh, kings and bluffs, has, maybe even bigger. Even it has, yeah, like like I think sevens are in there yeah, too. Yeah. After that, so yeah, I'd say five hundred k, something like that. It's hard to talk about what your range is here because you're not going to get to the river with a king like this. Yeah, occasionally, yeah. like once in a blue moon, but yeah, yeah not very often at all. Um, but yeah, I think he's just going to call it here. I think his bet size is just fine. He looks pretty zoned in here. I think there's a mm -hmm. chance he makes a fold. Nope. I ain't mad at you. I would call nah, him. I would yeah, call I don't blame him at all. That's, that's what I would do. Although we have seen, and like I said, I think we've we've seen all the showdowns, whereas or even the non-showdowns that uh, Brian hasn't got to see. It does look like you said two minutes ago that Mark just does not seem to be bet bluffing rivers. Yeah. So far, we haven't seen very much of that. Particularly as the pot gets larger. Yeah. He doesn't fall through. Yeah, with like that was a big single raised bluffs. just check down to the river pot. I think you got to defend that. That's a pretty hand. Mark with jack nine of hearts here on the button. Going up. 375. Mark raises 375k. Three seventy-five. Brian might be thinking about three betting here. Yeah, I think he's just choosing a situation more than a hand. I think mm -hmm. he's just saying, okay, this hand plays pretty well. Uh, I haven't three bet yet. As a default, I think he's going to call this hand. This yeah. hand just plays really well. Single raised. It plays fine in three bet too, but uh, it does suck blowing out all the jacks that that you're in good shape in, against and just keeping in like a jack ten suited type hand. This is one of those hands I typically threw at earlier in the final table, and then heads up uh, often is in my, my just calling range. Yeah, I don't think yeah. any heads up player would three bet this yeah. hand. Uh, it's just a little too weak to three bet for value, mm -hmm. and uh, a, a little too good to use as a bluff. Exactly. So, yeah, yeah I think uh, Jack Nine suited will oftentimes go into a linear three betting range, uh, but Jack Seven's just a little too weak. But like I said, a lot of situation guys, a lot of tournament players. Um, Raise. The best tournament players are, are very situational, and and I think that they're going to get hate a lot of the time because maybe their hand uh, in a vacuum isn't uh, doing the optimal play. But like, take this for instance: you just got marked a snap fold jack nine of hearts. Right. Maybe Brian just has a good feel for you know, hey, I'm going to get credit for this, and I think three betting it's going to be slightly better than calling. And, you know, I, I think that um, that's what makes poker cool is there's just a lot of different ways to win with a different strategy. And um, even though it might not be the conventional way to play, these guys like Chris Mormon and and uh, they're just feel players. They know where they're at. They know what they're going to get a lot of the time. And um, I think that that's just kind of a symbol of that. I'm also surprised that he folded Jack Knight suited. Yeah, He's I in think position. I would right. definitely call that hand. Yeah, it's uh, he couldn't pry it on my cold dead hands, but it's neither here nor there, I guess. This is going to be a call. It's one of those weird things where people have this big mental disparity between Jack-9 suited and Jack-10 suited. Like, he's never folding Jack-10 suited there, but yeah. he didn't even spend that long thinking about Jack-9 suited. Yeah, with Jack-9 oh, marks. Is a beautiful hand. King-10 versus A6. You're both players with a real hand again. And it is the king of mark that connects on king-8 deuce. And seeing as what we saw last time, I would expect Brian to just check back here. Yeah, I think uh, check or bet's fine. Mm -hmm. A small value bet, protection bet is fine. Um, checking is also fine. It looks like Mark's going to lead. Um, I'm not a big not fan a big of this. Fan. Just because the board gets bet so often. Um, yeah. And it sucks to not give him a chance to see bet with the hands that are just drawing dead against you. 
Because, I mean, if he did raise the button with five, five, three of spades or whatever, he's going to see about the flop. Yeah. Also, you know, it might just come turn brick. You bet once your opponent peels ace high. You yeah, miss absolutely. the value in that way. Yeah. But when you lead out here, you give him a very a reasonable opportunity to fold ace high. Yeah, and you're not you're not worried about protecting from much on a king eight deuce board. Yeah. Uh, so it's, you know, it's not like you're leading an uh, ace nine on a nine six five two spade board or something like that. Uh, it's a king eight deuce. It's just not that much to protect from. Well, you can see our payouts, 3.28 million in the prize pool. Lucky Cards Open attracted just over 1,000 players. It's grown every single year. Some old hard rock putting on numerous huge poker tournaments each year. August, February, April. Awesome Plus, venue, too. Yeah, awesome venue. venue. Really cool. Call. A call here from Mark, Mark one of the first limps Mark. of this heads-up match. Checks his Final check, three deuce. Jack Tun's not the hand I'm limping, though. A little too good. And a very nice flop for that Jack 10 with the Jack of Clubs. Unfortunately, they're it's hard to imagine don't get much value out of this. Pretty sure this hand's going to end, right? Yeah. Two, snap fold, hand over. Yeah. Final fold, Mark will take down the pot. <laughs> he, he gave that, oh man, you folded yeah. look. Like, yeah. he, he knows he only has jack high, but it's like every turn is pretty good for me. So, an exchange of smaller pots so far. Both of these guys have played pretty well today. Yeah. I'm going to give, uh, going to continue to give the, the edge to Brian. I think mm -hmm. that he's played the best final table of anyone. Um, actually, really surprised with his discipline today, too. I, I thought there was a good chance he would make some very high variance uh, plays, but it, I think whenever he kind of ran into it, he just waved the white flag and checked folded mm -hmm. or just gave up. There was no huge blow up. Fold. Mark fold. Well, he'll take that one down with ace nine. Gives a free show with the ace. Get a show two there. Not ace nine is pretty premium. <laughs> pretty proud of both of that. Heads up, it sure is. Mark has definitely played well here today, and. Uh, very unusual to talk about someone who is both an online player but really didn't play before Black Friday, particularly as an American. You know, it's okay, whatever, amongst Australians or Europeans or wherever yeah. else you find online poker these days. But in the U.S., you don't find a lot of guys who uh, came up playing online poker post-2011. Yeah, it's extremely unique. It's cool to, cool to see that, mm -hmm. too. I'm, I'm happy to see that some Americans are still learning the game. I know still living the dream. Yeah, man. I mean, I know the Black Friday just kind of crushed that bubble of young yeah. guys coming up in the game. Which, as it turns out, was very good for people in particularly our position. You know, I'm 30, you're 29, and uh, there's a few guys that are, you know, maybe a few years younger than us, but then after that there's this huge drop-off where guys can't create the bankroll, they can't get enough experience. Yeah. There hasn't been a new generation that is going to come up and try and make us obsolete. Yeah, so, you know, Black Friday, terrible from an industry perspective. Right, pretty good if you were specifically like 25 to 35-year-old you know, poker player in that moment. Yeah, I mean, the Europeans just keep getting better and better. That's the scary part. Yeah, that's the scary part. there's 21-year-old Europeans that are just monsters, but... Well, Mark facing a three bet here with King nine, a uh, King three suited. We'll fold that against the nines and Brian's. Blinds will be going up now. I believe they're going to be playing one hundred thousand, two hundred thousand. Wow. Yeah. It just got big. It got real big real quick. Three hundred K turbo here. Gross to think about. Oh, three hundred K turbo. Mm-hmm. Turns out Kelly was bringing up a bunch of the crowd support. Uh, yeah, yeah. Didn't yeah. quite realize that. I don't She's know where all the signs went for uh, for Mark, but very, very easy girl to root for. Mm -hmm. Seems really cool, really composed, yep. very smart. I, I'm certain that she's gonna 
be one of the top female poker players in no limit tournaments. I'm certain. I, I played. I only played with her for about eight hours. But uh -huh. I just tell she has what it takes to win. One, she's proven to be uh, someone who will put in the work. I mean, she's got a law degree and she's got a bio degree, so you know some somebody is okay with studying. Um, and two, it, the the intangible stuff. Like she just seemed tenacious. She seemed ready yep. to take spots. I mean, she buff, bluffed my buddy. Steve Comfortable Bro with aggression and risk. Big pot the yeah. other day. Yeah. Um, so I think. You know, she gets a bunch of hands under her belt. Somebody like that is just going to get better and better and better. It would be interesting to see her achieve that because if, you know, if she becomes one of the top female players in poker, then really, you know, of the regular tournament grinders, Vanessa and uh, and Kelly both being lawyers, you know. As yeah, the, that's as pretty cool, grind. yeah. I, I'm, I'm certain that she'll, she will become, uh, if she stays interested in the game, she'll be one of the biggest female winners, I'm certain. Well, Mark, you're at the pair of eights. Likely to three bet, reaching for three betting chips. Yeah, and I think we're going to see a call here with the seven five suited, mm -hmm. unless he makes Sizing it real dependent. big. Yeah, I think he's going like one point two. That'll definitely earn a call. One point three. Well, it's just under three x here. What, what did he raise to? One point three million. Okay, so he's getting a little better than two to one. I still don't see him folding seven five suited. Especially if he was flatting the 5-4-0 before. That's a healthy 3-bet, though. I mean, yeah. It's almost a pot-sized raise. Um, but, yeah, he flatted the 5-4 suited earlier. I'll tell you what, though. He's only got $10 million back. Yeah. I, I didn't... Uh, you thought he was a little deeper? Yeah, yeah. I think he should fold here. Yeah, I was going to say, I, I I don't know whether I call or fold here. I think I often end up folding, but I, you yeah, know, it's one of those things pretty, where... It's pretty close. I mean, you're 50x. Really he's just made a pot-sized 3-bet, and um, I think it's pretty close. Ah, well, row. that is an interesting yeah. flop. Queen, uh, eight, six, two clubs. Middle set for Mark. Open ender for Brian. Bet call? I think, yeah, bet call. I mean, there's definitely, he can't shove the 7-5. That would be no good. There's a lot of draws that are much better than 7-5 diamonds on the sport. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you oh. definitely cannot shove for I'll a ton of chips when you might get called by a draw with a better high card. I really wouldn't hate a check here by Mark either. Um, I think betting's fine as well. Yeah. But this is such a good board for Brian's cold calling range that I think um, checking – like if I if – Mark's I definitely, range if I wants to set, check is what you're saying? Yeah, well, if I had yeah. top set, I would check for sure. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, I think betting and not blocking him having top pair is pretty nice. You just get to stack Brian whenever he has a queen. But I think checking's pretty cool and just kind of letting him hurricane it off to use two sometimes. Because it's a nasty board. Like, if you have ace-king, red ace-king, I yeah. mean, you might just bet fold the flop. But it's a lot of times you're just going to check fold a bunch of your range. Wow, he made a healthy bet. He made a healthy bet, yeah. He made 1.5. I mean, I guess he bet 1.3 pre, but he didn't down bet. I imagine he's just going to call. I That's think such a big bet. It might just yeah. induce a fold, a very yeah. disciplined fold, or induce the uh, the all in the heroics. That is a big old bet. Yeah, he's getting called. to do some math here. Yeah, I think it's a, it's a call and no other play, in my opinion. It also looks suspect to count out calling chips and then do anything else, especially, you know, raise. Yeah. Yeah, well, he'll make the call. Yeah, he's just gonna just gonna fold a bunch of turns. I think yeah. this is fine play. Once in a while, Mark bet folds the flop, even though that sizing would kind of scare me away from the idea that he was gonna. Oh, oh my wow. goodness! Wow, life is so good for Brian. Oh, poor Mark. That is so unlucky. Uh, flop middle set and a three bet pot heads up and just the gen card. It's unbelievable. What should Mark sizing be here? Jason? Um, well, he has seven point five million left. There's just under pot. Or six under the pot. I think uh, 
I would just uh, well, I would have sized my flop bet a little mm-hmm. smaller, mm-hmm. but as played, I think he should make it two point four million. Okay. Just go half pot, half pot. So a little under half pot, a little under half pot, something like that. Yeah. I'm with you that I size somewhere like that. I also would not be surprised to see a shove. I don't think yeah, he'll I, shove, but yeah, I mean, you just got to cooler him that way. Yeah. Um, but it is cool you don't block any top pair. It is double flush draw board. And so good, though. <laughs> it's really hard to make a set. Wow, and he is all in. in. We got a and a snap call. So, if Mark can get a full house on this river, he's going to win our tournament. If he yeah. doesn't, That's just chip lead is going to tr- trade. So, so unlucky. Yeah, just it a disgusting hand. looks like Mark hand. kind of knew where he was in the hand, too. I think he felt like Brian turned over five, um, seven. He, he was going to get called. But I think he just assumed Brian had a queen. Yeah thinking that Brian shoves all of his flush draws on the flop, right. and he doesn't block him having any queens. He blocks him having an eight. He probably folds a six on the flop. So why not just shove and yeah. get a call from the queen? Yeah, exactly. You know, or the slow-played kings or aces pre, if that's what it turned out to be. Yep. That's just really unlucky. I also just thought he might shove because if you have clubs or spades in Mark's position, you might just shove. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, the double flush draw yeah. board, may, you just have infinite draws. Brian's all in for seven million. But I still think, like, flop C bet wise, you you want to size down there and just have, at least that way, you have more hands that are just bet folding the flop. Mark. Here's the river card. And a seven on the river is not going to provide the necessary full house. Brian will double up. And Brian's going to win this pot. And the chip counts is set essentially trade places. Mark had 20 going into this match to Brian's 10. Now Brian's the one with 20. Chris will count the chips down for us. What a gross feeling. You three bet pre, you get your set, your head's up, you're like, yes, I'm about to win this tournament. Safe turn card, too. Yeah. Like, you go all in, your opponent snaps. You're like, I win the tournament. No. <laughs> yeah, I tell you, it's amazing. Everyone's composure at this final table. Every single person has been so cool. Yeah. Win or lose, they're, no one's making a scene. No one's – it's just really nice to see. Well, we said that we liked Brian today. Yeah, and, well, that uh, one there The was, deck likes him, too. Yeah, the deck liked him, yeah. Yeah, but I definitely uh, – he's – from from the beginning, I mean, it's been very clear that he was going to be the pick to win the tournament. And he doesn't really have that much live experience, it seems like, and uh, it's he doesn't, right? I've played some live cash games with him. Oh, okay. Um, I don't know how many tournaments he's played. We can hand him mob him he's quick. Played all the tournaments on the internet, so I mean, he's yeah, he did with that. But it's it's nice to see his his live uh, composure is very good too. So 50 blinds, still a bunch of chips. It's anybody's match. Looks like he's going to start limping. I think this is a fine hand to do it with. Agreed, yeah. So Brian has about a quarter million, about 225,000 in live caches preceding this final table. Oh, so he's got plenty of experience. Yeah. Um, you know, and some of them in bigger events. As far as I can tell, though, his largest cash is fifth at a Borgata 2500 in November. So that was their, uh, their f- I think that would have been their fall poker open. And he got fifth for 74K. Played some of the EPTs, clearly he's playing the side events at like PCA, stuff like that, World Series. But uh, groundbreaking score for him today, mm-hmm. however it turns out. This is going to be another street bet. He led the flop. Interesting. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think it's it's fine. It's pretty cool to get the check call and make some straights sometimes. But believe in, in the limped pot. If I'm going to lead the flop, I'm going to bet that turn. Yeah, I think so too. But I do kind of understand his logic. On the six, he doesn't really have any bluffs. 
Uh, looks like Mark's going to go for a little pin protection bet. And, uh, and then just so he can check back the river. I think after uh, Brian has checked to him on the turn, he assumes the same things that I assumed, that Brian would bet the turn with the king. Yep. So he's looking at his 5x Brian with an ace kicker is probably good or maybe hand. losing to like 7-6 or 6-3 six, yeah, six, exactly. or but, something. But let's protect it because yeah. he'll beat a lot of 5s and 4s. Deuce on the river. We'll give Brian the straight. Yeah, I don't think betting makes sense for Brian because um, he's continuing to represent a one-pair kind of bluff catcher hand. Yeah, I and agree. And you would want to give Mark a chance to bluff. I like this check here. Yeah. So Brian will pad his chip lead there. Dude flexing in the in the stands, flexing. Got a great beard. Got some of the wrestling team out with him. He is an assistant coach. I don't want to say it was his brother's wrestling team. Well, he's kept his ears in good shape for being a wrestler. Mm -hmm. Most of those guys have the big cauliflower ear. Isn't that boxing more so than wrestling? No, wrestling. Wrestling too? Oh yeah, wrestling's where all that comes from. Raise move four seventy five. Here he's got the 9 8 of diamonds. Mark's 9 million. Quick fold from Mark. And another free show. Mark here with a 6-4 offsuit on the button. It's going to be a fine hand to just give a walk with. Since um, raising is okay, uh, yeah, I think that's... I think what Mark's trying to do with his limping strategy so far is just um, basically try to win more chips than uh, losing half of a big blind with his worst hands. Because he's limped 6-4 off and 5-3 off. I think what he's just trying to do is overcome the uh, uh, overcome basically the EV of uh, zero, basically Ch trying to just break even on his uh, on his limbs, just do better, slightly better than just walking him. Goes that call on ten four deuce. Which is a fine strategy until your opponents start punishing you, and then you just have to start walking those hands. Yeah. Turn is a king. This went check call. It went bet call. Brian led the. Uh, queen Brian six. led the queen six. Mm, yeah. All right. I normally don't bet those kind of spots. Yeah, this is a uh, this is um, kind of a interesting one. It's one of the no equity bluffs. It is a no. Yeah, we haven't seen him make uh, I think any no equity bluffs so far today. But he bets that turn and he gets a pretty quick fold from Mark. Yeah, I didn't think about that one. That's uh, a little more confusing to me. They gave a lot of hands that... Oh, that's kind of cool. Yeah, we got some new stats. Uh -huh. As you can see there, Brian Altman oh, yeah. in a short-handed environment, not shy. Mm -mm. Mark Doobie. I think Doobie's 100% button. I think 24% yeah. uh, you're seeing him folding the small blind. I don't think if he's limping 5-3 off and 7-4 off on the button, he's folding anything. I mean, I guess 9 deuce off and deuce 3 and 7 deuce he might fold. So Ryan will open up his jack deuce. Mark will call this hand. Oh. 
And it is a king 6-6 six, six flop. Does not connect with either player. And a likely board for Brian to win with a bet. I think Mark's going to check all this. I just have that feeling. Yeah? I think he's going to float the back, the overs to the six. and the, Or the overs, yeah, to whatever. A reasonable spot yeah, to yeah. be floating his backdoor texture. Flush draw, or backdoor straight draw. Yeah, yeah. I think... Uh, there's just a reasonable chance he floats. Your opponent's betting a huge percentage of his range. It's certainly all his garbage. Yeah, and he already he already floated the 10-7 suit in the mm -hmm. three bet pot earlier against the guy. I just kind of see this happening on this board. I just feel it. I think check raise is fine too. Barrel nines and fives. Showdown sevens and eights. Occasionally. I mean, you do flop sixes once in a while that would want to raise the flop. For a little check raise here. Yeah, I, I don't mind zoned it in so far, it. Jason. Yeah. Uh, and it is a small check raise to 950,000, which I think is a fine sizing here. Yeah. You don't need to go very big. No, of course not. You, you have no draws. You're repping only a six. Although. Mark yeah. can kind of plausibly represent a king. I don't think this would be a texture that he would check yeah, raise it on, but I mean, he's been raising those yeah, type hands yeah. that maybe he could. Yeah, I think in this spot he's only raising a six, but um, yeah, props to him. I think it's a very good spot to check raise. 